tell me what you're feeling or experiencing. Where are you? It's a staircase. I'm on a staircase. I'm, I'm a on little a, girl. I'm a little girl. Mm -hmm. I'm going up and there's a lady coming down. Tell me more. Where are you? There's, there's like a hutch or something on the side, on the right side. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about that hutch? Does it have anything in it? Bottles. Mm -hmm. It looks old and the, the lady's dressed like a maid. Mm -hmm. Take a look at yourself. Take a look at your feet, for example. What do you look like? What do you have on your feet? I don't think there's any shoes, just mm. barefoot. Barefoot? Mm. What are you wearing on your body? Mm -hmm. Describe this dress. How long is it? Just mid-calf. Mm -hmm. Is this a simple dress or a fancy dress? Simple. Old, like... What color is this dress? Brown. Mm -hmm. And took a look at your hands. Are you carrying anything? Just holding the rail on mm -hmm. the right side of the staircase and she's coming down the left. Mm -hmm. What do you look like? Just a little girl. Mm -hmm. What color is your hair? can't see it. I think I have a bonnet on. A bonnet. Very good. So let's see what happens next. What happens when this maid comes down? I don't think I'm supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. Connect with your feelings and tell me what you feel when you see her. I think it's the staircase for the maids or... Mm -hmm. Why are you not supposed to be on that staircase? I don't know. Mm -hmm. She's holding a lamp. Mm-hmm. She stops to ask me something. So I'd like for you to connect even deeper. I'm going to tap your forehead, and as I do, you'll be able to get into that body even more, into that mind of that little girl even more, and hear the discussion. What does she say? Okay, tell her I made up something about why. I'm getting I'm told her I. I need medicine for somebody. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What does she tell you? I think she's arguing. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to connect with your emotions and tell me how that feels. What are you feeling? She doesn't think I belong there. Mm -hmm. But I can can talk my way out of it. Mm -hmm. How old are you? Seven, eight, mm -hmm. nine. And I'd like for you to listen for your nine. name. What is your name? Something with an M. Mm -hmm. Matilda or Mildred. When I say the name Mildred, does that sound familiar? Millie. Millie. Mm-hmm. So, Millie, we're going to go to the place where you live now. I'd like for you to close that scene and see yourself now in the place where you live, where you sleep. Be it's there. there in the, it's a big place, like, um, sort of like a castle, but mm -hmm. not really. It just looks like that. There's lots of land and acres and trees all around it and it's very big mm -hmm. tell me more it's bright it's sunny it's bright outside it, it's pretty there but i like to go on that staircase because i like i like to go in places like that why is it you like to go in places like that? It just feels good. Mm hmm So let's see what happens next, Millie. I'd like for you to close that scene 
and we're going to go to a scene in that same lifetime that affected you. It could be a sad time or a happy time. Be there now. It's like a big banquet table. Mm -hmm. Who's there with you? There's, there's just lots of people. I don't know who they are. How are you dressed there? Take a look at your attire. I don't know. I feel like they don't see me like they... I feel... small. Mm -hmm. Are you young? Yeah, the same. The same. So, these people on the banquet table, who are they? Who are they to you? There's lots of men, and I don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. Are there any women there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Who are the women to you? They're, I think they're guests. Mm -hmm. And I'm supposed to just be quiet. How does that make you feel? Nobody notices me. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens at this banquet. Is there anything? I eat and I listen. Mm -hmm. I, I, ob I observe and I listen to everybody. And there's this one man, and he takes all the attention. He's like the center of attention. He's kind of bald and he has a beard and he's short. I don't like how he looks. Mm -hmm. I don't like him. Mm -hmm. He he th he's so I read I read him and he he's so full of himself and I don't like him. He's somebody important. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes him, but I don't like him. What do you feel when you disdain? Like he thinks he's something. Mm -hmm. He thinks he's so entertaining, and I don't like him. All right, so we're going to now close that scene and let's move either forward or backwards to another scene in that same life that has meaning. Where are you? Still there. It's still there. Let's find out what it is about this man in this situation that makes you feel so strongly. Explain to me what happens. He's. He, I think he's. He drinks and it helps him loosen up and he's jovial and obnoxious and. It just makes me so uncomfortable to to read him so well. It makes me makes me so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Are you able to see things in him that others do not? Yes. Mm -hmm. What is the importance of this? Nobody sees me and. But they uh, they see him, and he, he doesn't really feel that way about himself. Mm -hmm. So you're able to see things about him that mm -hmm. nobody else does. Right. Okay, good. So we're going to use the same ability that you have to read him. And I want you to now close the scene and go to another scene in your lifetime when you once again are able to read someone else and is affecting your life. Be there now. Where are you? I think it's like some type of a... like a bar, an old, maybe old type of a bar and... It's better. I feel more comfortable, but I can still read everybody. Mm -hmm. 
What do you do at that bar? I'm just sitting there mm -hmm. with people. Take a look around. Just kind of describe what you see, who these people are. These old times. Everybody's happy. I don't know why I'm there. Mm -hmm. But I can read everybody and how they feel. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel, knowing that you can tap in to their feelings? It's powerful, but it's, it's so much. Mm -hmm. What do you do with this ability? Nothing there. I just... It's more comfortable. It's not as hard. Mm -hmm. How old are you there? I'm um, 21, 3. Mm -hmm. Young. Young. Mm -hmm. And I want you now, I'm going to tap your forehead and you're going to see the year. What year is this? 1933. 1933. 1833. Mm -hmm. And where are you? I feel like it's Nova Scotia, but no. mm -hmm. I don't know where that is, but I don't know where that came from. All right, very good. So I'd like for you to close that scene now. Let's move to another scene in that same lifetime that is important, that is affecting that life. Be there now. Look around, is it indoors or outdoors? It's, it's sick people, sick. somewhere I'm with sick people. Mm -hmm. But I'm not. Tell me where you see these sick people. Some kind of place and they're just around. Mm -hmm. Is it some sort of a place where you care for these people? I'm, somebody just brought me there and I'm just looking. Mm -hmm. So I think to see what this has to be done. Okay. How old are you there? 20 something. 20 something. To the 30s. Mm -hmm. So I want you to just focus completely on the reason why you're there, why you have been brought there. What is your responsibility with these sick people? Supposed to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. What abilities do you have that allows you to figure out what to I do? I just always know mm -hmm. what needs to happen next and how to direct it. So I'd like There's for you people on the sitting on the floor and they're sick. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of place it is. There's nothing really in there. So I'd like for you to use the same reading abilities that you have always used and read these people. They're scared of me. Mm -hmm. They they don't know if I'm going to hurt them or help them. Mm -hmm. They think I'm really powerful. They're just quiet. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to somebody about it. I'm telling somebody about what we're going to do. So as you read this room, what is wrong with these people? Why are they there? Some of them have a disease. Mm -hmm. They're just sick. Mm -hmm. it's, it's children. It's everybody. Is it any particular disease that has taken? I feel like this te some of it's TB. I feel like some of it's TB. Mm -hmm. But I, I think there's other things. And it's, it's all run down. And it's, it's run down. It's, it's real run down. It's just in like some kind of building. All right. So I'd like for you to fast Cold. forward. Fast forward in this scene until you get to the conclusion of what happens, what do you do with these sick people? We fixed them all, you know, we set up, we set up stuff there. 
we set up stuff in there and we're taking care of them in there. Mm -hmm. Is it just you or is it team? No, there's more people, mm -hmm. but, but I'm telling them how to do it. Okay, good. So now let's move forward in time. I'd like for you to close this scene and let's go to another scene in that same lifetime that made an impact. Be there now. I'm at that, that house, that nice castle house. and Oh, that man is my father. I think I can't stand him. Mm -hmm. And I need... I needed some help, you know. No, I don't know if he's my father, but he's somebody that is like a father. Mm -hmm. Maybe an uncle or he's somebody. That's who I lived there with. Mm -hmm. What do you need from him today? Some help, to try, some, some money to take care of, some help mm -hmm. so I can help these people and he won't do it. Mm -hmm. So do you come to any conclusions about him or your situation I just think that he's I just think he's self-absorbed mm -hmm. so I'd like for you to look deeply into his eyes the eyes of the window to the soul do you recognize those eyes in anyone in the lifetime of Connie I don't know He's so familiar. Mm -hmm. He's so familiar, but I don't know who he is. So I'd like for you to just record those eyes. Yeah. So that in the future when Connie comes across, she will understand where this comes from. So she'll be able to connect the dots. I know who he is. Mm -hmm. It's my music teacher. Yeah, I was scared of him too. Mm -hmm. Very good. And as, as that realization comes, we'll understand why Connie reacted certain ways. He wanted me to be. He wanted me to be what he wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Is that the same in this life now that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So now let's close this scene and let's go to the last day of that lifetime. See yourself in the last day. Where are you? Are you indoors or outdoors? I can't see the last day. Mm -hmm. So go back. Go back even more before the last day. Let's find out what happened to that body. ease into it. I feel like it's a some type of accident. Mm -hmm. Go back even more to right before the accident. It may, you may even have to detach yourself from that body and just see it, see it happening. I think um, I'm riding on a horse and it, it tripped on a rock. How old are you there? I'm still young. Mm -hmm. So what happened to the spirit? What happened to that part, that 
soul where to go. Did it detach from that body at that time? Mm-hmm. The horse is scared. He waits. I, don't, I think it's just easy. It's. Mm-hmm. It's just. I just know that. like that I'm dead, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So let's follow and see what happens. Where does your soul go after you leave that scene? Take me on the journey with you. Just feel light, and uh, I can just see, you know, the horse. Mm-hmm. He's waiting, and he doesn't know. He knows, but he doesn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Do you connect with that horse? Yeah, because for some reason, I want him to know it's all right. Mm-hmm. What do you tell the horse? It's not his fault. Mm-hmm. Stumbled on a rock. Are you able to feel what the horse feels? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What happens next? When somebody. Somebody's in the woods. Tell me more. I think it's like a um, young, might be like a Native American or somebody, but they're dressed pretty traditionally. Mm-hmm. But he just checks on me, but he's scared, so he just, he takes the horse and he goes. So what do you do is next? I yeah. think he... I think he checks to see if I have anything on me that he can take. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I mean, I don't care because he might as well. He might as well. I don't have much, but he takes whatever I have. What happens next? What do you experience or see? They're telling that man that I died. That man I don't like. Mm -hmm. He's really upset. I'm surprised. Connect with the emotions. He seems real for a change. He can't be the life of the party. How does this death affect him? I think he he can't... He loses the hope in what he wanted me to be because I'm gone. I think he wanted to... He wanted me to be something big like him. Mm -hmm. Can you understand him from a different perspective now? Yeah, he just wanted to be accepted and he just figured out, he just figured out how to make himself accepted and he didn't like himself and he didn't like how he looked. So he figured out another way and I didn't like him for that. Mm -hmm. But it was just what he knew to do. 
that was just how he knew to do it. Can you forgive this man now? Yeah. For... Mm -hmm. What happens after this now? Where do you go? There's something about that maid. I'm supposed to do something. Mm -hmm. Tell me where She's you go. She's unhappy and um, bitter. Mm -hmm. She was jealous of me. She thought that I was the child who had everything I could have had and I just wanted to creep around them their staircases and see other experiences instead of my own mm -hmm. life. And what happened to your parents? I don't, it was just that man, I don't know mm -hmm. how I came to be with him. I think he adopted, I don't know, somehow I came to be with him. Mm -hmm. So did you make peace with the maid? No, there's some things still there. All right. Take a look at that maid's eyes. I think she like she sees me as a as a ghost. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm. I think maybe I come on that staircase as a ghost to her. Mm -hmm. Do you ever leave that staircase? I don't know where it goes. It. Something she sneaks down and she gets something out of that cabinet. Mm -hmm. Something in there that she medicates herself with. Mm -hmm. I think um, she knows I know. She knows I know. She doesn't like it that I know as a child. So I'd like to, for you to find when it is when you finally leave that place. Does your soul leave that house? Or does it remain there? It stays in the staircase for a while because that maid sees me and she thinks she's going crazy mm -hmm. because she knows I died. Why do you remain there? To, because I help her with whatever she's taking out of that. Mm -hmm. Some type of medication she medicates herself with. Mm -hmm. How do you help her? Because I let her see me, that mm -hmm. I know she's doing it. Okay. So she doesn't know if she's going crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I help her some way. Okay. So I'd like for you to connect with her soul now and tell me, is she someone that Connie knows in this lifetime? I think so. Mm -hmm. Like for you to connect the dots and understand. I think she's uh, um, she's exactly the same as someone that worked at a girl's home, mm -hmm. where Connie was, where Connie worked. Mm -hmm. She was very harsh and very. Harsh. Mm -hmm. Was there any sort of balancing of karma in this lifetime with that maid? She wanted to come back and help other people, but she did to a certain degree, but she still had so much of her own pain that she still inflicted it upon people. Mm -hmm. She's 
It's better. Very good. So let's remove any residual of that lifetime and tell me how it will affect now, Connie, understanding this life. You think that people will try to hide their secrets and pain and sometimes they don't want you to see and know sometimes they know you know and mm-hmm. it's uncomfortable for them mm-hmm. but if they know you don't judge them if you know but you still don't judge them it's easier so how can she use this knowing in this lifetime because there are other people who know you know because they're like you and they can feel that you know and they know Mm -hmm. that you are reading them and interpreting their energy Mm -hmm. it's very uncomfortable for them because they know that they know that they can be read because Mm -hmm. they can read Mm -hmm. so if they also can know that there's no judgment it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. so there are situations in Connie's life where she is applying judgment judgment about how other people feel about for example celebrities and in that lifetime we saw how she reacted to how people were reacting to her uncle. Is she using some of that, those feelings in this lifetime? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like a sort of disdain for the poppers, sort of like the common, mm-hmm. like an annoyance, but you can be whatever you want to be and maybe some people want to be the common people that it's not for me to decide Mm -hmm. was Connie ever in the opposite where she was being looked at as something special yeah all right so I'd like to have you take her to that memory I'm going to count from five back to one and I want to take you, have her take this lifetime of this person that was being adulated. Five, going through time and space. Four, to that lifetime when others were looking up to her. Three, allowing the images and memories to come now. Two, and one, be there now. I think it's Queen Esther or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. Somebody like Queen Esther. She knows how to. She knows exact since she knows how to read people. She knows exactly how to get chosen. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to be her. But it's. She's just kind of detached from it, like this is something she does to do what she has to do. Mm-hmm. So now seeing that life, experiencing it from this queen's point of view, the detachment, how can she apply, how can Connie apply that same detachment to those who look up to other people that she knows? that she spent time with instead of trying to connect with the people who she has to be have a little bit of detachment from well instead of trying to connect in a way that she can't connect she should connect in the way she can connect Mm -hmm. so 
take that connection, whatever it is, even if it's this uncomfortable feeling of being worshipped, find whatever aspect that is and just go with it. And then a, a deeper connection can happen with people who are connecting in different ways. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's just not having to force people to be in roles they're not supposed to be and just connecting with them wherever they whatever that connection is connect with people on all different levels different intersections mm -hmm. and if if it's something that they're looking up to her or whatever she can just accept that and she doesn't have to make it be a connection it's not well, I'd like for you to show her now, you're going to practice showing her a situation in which someone is acting like a groupie. Yeah. And as like a lesson, I'd like for you to go ahead and show her, read her own energy, what's going on inside of her, and how it is that she's judging that person. She's annoyed that they just like they don't know that they're this we're all the same like mm -hmm. everybody's the same mm -hmm. it's whatever you it's however you think about yourself whatever you think about yourself is whatever you portray and so then that's what people think about you and so she feels irritated that she's forced to think less of them because they think less of themselves and she wants to see them as something else mm -hmm. so i'd like for you to go ahead and allow her to read those groupies read what they're actually feeling about the person that they're admiring it's just a feeling of feeling good. Mm -hmm. So should we deny a person to feel good in their own, the way that they feel no. good? All right. It's like telling somebody what to eat or what to drive or what to wear, mm -hmm. what kind of house to like, what kind of decoration. You just, just like what you like. Mm -hmm. Good. So knowing that now, how can she get past that internal conflict of name dropping? Some of it could just be like a comfort zone thing, the whole sort of letting go of a mentality that no longer serves her. Mm -hmm. You know, just letting go of rigidity. She's, it seems like people, like it's a pyramid of sort of importance and she wants to feel like everybody is the same mm -hmm. but yet it doesn't really seem to be that way in the society that we live in and she she's constantly kicking against that pyramid or ladder thing mm -hmm. but yet it, it, it's what it is so does she need to just accept that? Forgive herself? And not just that, but just take her attention off of it. Mm -hmm. Detach more from she it. she looks at, the bigger it becomes. Okay. So she needs to practice detaching. Yeah. Okay. So not getting involved with what people should be feeling or should be doing. Yeah, and plus she has to learn to stop. coddling everybody's feelings and mm -hmm. saying no when people people want to always be with her constantly always have access to her she doesn't want it but she always feels like she's rejecting them mm -hmm. so does she need to set up healthy boundaries of no Mm, uh, boundaries yes and no like still accessible but only from a certain distance mm -hmm. 
Well, when we build a house, we build them with doors. Yeah. And those doors allow us to keep people out when we want to remain private. And we open the doors when we allow people to come in and socialize with us. It's because she can feel mm -hmm. how strongly they want her. Then she can also feel that rejection when she, what they perceive as rejection. Mm -hmm. but it's really not up to her to direct their perception. They have to, that's part of their, pro that's part of their process. She can't, she can't be the nurse to their feelings all the time. Mm -hmm. So but what? it's a lot, she's doing so much better. She's so much better. It's, it's getting so much easier, but she acts like it's not, but it is. Mm -hmm. So now that she really is a nurse for the soul, how can she transition from this mainstream nursing into yeah, something she's else? Doing just what she's doing because you just have to start and not wait for the the huge like a huge event you just start where you are and it picks up momentum mm -hmm. like a snowball that you just keep adding snow to until it's the bottom of a snowman and mm -hmm. keep on just that's all that it is you just keep on you just keep on doing it and then it just unfolds is it there, just unfolds is there anyone helping her with this any of her guides there's, there's a lot. Mm -hmm. There's an Owen. Mm -hmm. What is Owen's responsibility with her? Coordinating events. Mm -hmm. Coordinating, coordinating stuff. Was Owen responsible for coordinating our meeting today? Yes. Mm -hmm. well, thank There's you. All Owen. sorts of little things, just like that. And mm -hmm. She forgets it so easily, and when she appreciates it, the more of it comes. Very good. So she says that she does a lot of coordination and a lot of formulas at night when she sleeps. What does she work on? Hybrid DNA children. Mm-hmm. DNA. Can you tell me about that? What is she, what is her responsibility? It's like a bridge, it's like bridges, you know? She's always a bridge, like, always between the celebrity and the groupie and between one extreme. She's always between stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, She's always the bridge between the sides. She's part of both. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about that? Is she a hybrid herself? Yes. Okay, can you tell me how that came to be? She started it mm -hmm. because she likes the details she likes to plan. So she started planning her lives. And she got involved in the DNA. And so she wanted to do it for her own self. Mm -hmm. So she designed it. Did she have a body when she was planning this? She's, she does it all in between. And mm -hmm. She does it in between the lives. So there's like a team. Mm -hmm. She does it in between. She goes back and she she looks at the lives and she's always like she's always pushes it to the max. Like how far could you go and still accomplish the mission? She's always on pushing things to the extreme. Mm -hmm. So what was the mission of this lifetime? As Connie. Contrast. Mm -hmm. She's gotten quite a bit of it, hasn't she? Yeah. Is she going to continue with this contrast, or is she good with it now? 
It's more an acceptance mm -hmm. of contrast. And so when you ex accept it, it becomes less, it's still high contrast, but it, it doesn't feel as, as painful or the, like a stark difference anymore. It becomes more, becomes more normal. Mm -hmm. So you can almost get like addicted to the contrast, to the growth. And she, she her body grew really fast and as a child, fast, fast, fast. And it was the same with her soul. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask a little bit about her body and her features. Because she seems to think that she may have some DNA that is of those that were here before. Can you tell her where her DNA originates from? It was all the things that she thought. Lots in the cave, under like a um, maybe like a cave. It's like a cave that goes into the end of the earth. Mm -hmm. There's the people. They're they're very tall. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that they're called Nephilim necessarily, but they're they're from like a it's like a cave that goes we're down under. Mm -hmm. Can you show her that cave now? Can you show her? She her can life? see it. Yeah. All right. Can you explain she, I don't what that? No, that she. I don't think that she lived there, but. All right. So let's take her. I'd like for you to go ahead and take her through time and space to see where this DNA originates from, where her origins are from. It's, she's, she's like a genet, like a scientist geneticist. Mm -hmm. Male or female? Female, creating, literally creating her next body. Okay. Um, it's kind of like a, a lab, but like maybe in a ship. Mm -hmm. And, um, somehow she has D it's like DNA from all the, like the past, like body souls mm -hmm. from her own. Yeah. I'd like for you to describe what these different body souls, parts she's taking. Look at the features, look at the aspects, look at the abilities. What is she putting together? She looks, she's looking for certain traits mm -hmm. <clears throat> because she has like an understanding of if somebody has this trait, they perhaps behave this way. If they have this, they do that. Mm -hmm. That's the formula. See, so she sets the intention for her mission and then she decides that that could be accomplished with somebody who had certain things. For example, now in this life, she can't hide no matter how hard she tries, she cannot hide, but she would if she could. What is the purpose of making her to the point where she cannot hide? So that she'll do what she's supposed to do because there's no hiding. Okay. And so she put that in purpose on purpose. Mm -hmm. So that's the physical aspects mm -hmm. of her, the, the height mm -hmm. and the hair mm -hmm. and the coloring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she's able to be seen. Not like it or not. Right. Okay. What are the other traits that she has chosen for herself in this body? Well, she's 
very, people always say, comment about how big she is. Mm -hmm. She doesn't see herself as big. And what is the reason why she is of such stature? Because you become what people think you are. Mm -hmm. She needed that. Is that part of the mission? Yeah. Okay. Become. If people attribute power to you because of a trait, or they attribute, you know, like say somebody is assigned the attribute of sexy because of whatever, they become that. Mm -hmm. And so she needed to become big, powerful. Yes. It almost seems like she's taken on a warrior quality, like out there being strong. Yeah, she, like, everybody likes to say like she's an Amazon or... Mm -hmm. But the, the best way to fight is to not fight. Mm -hmm. To, well, the best way to fight is to know mm -hmm. exactly what your path of least resistance, how much fighting to do, that's what it is. Yeah. Not to not fight, because you have to fight sometimes, but it's to always know just the right amount we fight when we don't need to fight just allow so how has this helped in this mission because she's since she's always known that people have attributed so much power to her she has to sort of constantly stay in this state of um she has to always show a certain amount of authenticity so that people will be disarmed okay because if she can show that she's not harmful, well, first of all, she has to really not be harmful, which is, is that is how she really is authentic like that. And then when, when people realize that she won't harm them, then her big and powerfulness doesn't matter as much. Okay. What are the other traits that she needed for this lifetime? The hair comes from because people thought that red hair was, they were witches and evil, emotionally unstable people, mm -hmm. which that all comes from some element of truth. Tell me more about that. Where does that come from? Somebody, maybe, maybe Socrates, maybe somebody else said that redheads were like an untrained house dog. Mm -hmm. And it's true because she can't be broken. And so that's, it becomes true because, see, things become true because we make them true. So when there's, when there's a large amount of belief, when there's a huge amount of momentum in the belief of something, it becomes more of that. Mm -hmm. So if there, there's a strong belief that redheads hold these certain attributes, that is what is expected of them and it becomes true. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even matter so much if the person is aware of, of that. Like, she was sheltered for most of her life and she didn't always know what people thought about redheads, but they still treated her in that way. And so she became that, mm -hmm. but it's a good thing. And she knew, she knew that. And so that's why she planned it in there because she knew that she had to be, um, unbroken. Like she only follows important rules and she doesn't ever follow any other rules that everybody thinks that she's a rule follower because they perceive her to be one, but she only follows the big rules and she breaks every single other rule because it's ridiculous and it's not important. And she doesn't like rules. Mm -hmm. Now she seems to be experiencing some neurological symptoms. Is this part of the programming that was put in there? 
Take a look and part see. of it is because she's went through such an awakening, mm -hmm. and the energy just courses through her body. She can sleep five hours, mm -hmm. and she's good. And one day she realized there was no lack of sleep. Mm -hmm. She didn't need that kind of sleep anymore. But the but the energy hits blockages, and it. And because of her fashion, mm -hmm. everything is so sensitive and it's like to be, comfort has to be when she's finely tuned and when she's not, she feels it so extreme and her, it's, it, it's, it's like the fascia is a nervous system in and of itself. Mm -hmm. What is the secret of the fascia? It's, it's, it's where all of the feelings and the memories, at least for her, mm -hmm. the feelings, the memories, her abilities, it's a, it's a sense. It, it's the, it's her strongest sense of any sense she has. It's, it overrides taste, smell, touch. It's this hyper awareness of all energy. She's so uh, acutely aware. And so it becomes, it becomes the, when there's unsettledness or um, unrest, unease, disease, then then the fascia becomes inflamed, it becomes brittle, and that's where pain, stiffness comes from. That's people have chronic pain, they think that they have muscular pain. In fact, it is their fascia that is squeezing and restricting the muscles, it really has nothing to do with the muscles at all. That's only secondary. Mm. It's the cause for, uh, it's the cause for people who are visually, you can see that they are stiffened and hunched over people that you look at them and you think, how did they get to be that way where they can't even stand up straight? It's all the fascia. Those are the people who are very, very sensitive. <clears throat> and when they do not follow, when they do not follow their feelings and they do not choose themselves, you damage that that fascia becomes brittle and it and it can like it's like your hair it's like when your hair is brittle mm -hmm. and it snaps it's exactly the same that's how your fascia is can we repair the fascia oh yeah how do you repair fascia you just set the intention and then you let it happen but it's whatever each person needs for her one of the biggest keys seems to be movement because she has all this energy in her body all the time and is had never been that way before. Mm -hmm. She'd always been sort of a tired and lackadaisical. Well, in her mind she was. Mm -hmm. Would you call Ooh. the fascia maybe a seventh sense? It is. It's 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 a. It's, it's like a, it's, it's your connection. It's a web of, it's what connects you to everything and everyone. Mm -hmm. It goes through your whole body. It's like, um, it's like the internet. It's like, um, it's, it has a vibration. And I have to go to the bathroom. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and touch the shoulder. When I touch her shoulder, Connie can open her eyes. And when we come back, she can go even deeper than she is now with more knowledge, more information. Eyes open. Mm. I'd like for you now to connect with that fashion. Connect with that web of information as you allow your divine self to explain even more. It's not a defect unless you think it is. Mm -hmm. It's 
It's like a gift. Why are the doctors saying it's defective? Well, we look at all of, we look at everything sometimes automatically from a negative, you know, like, mm-hmm. just like when she said she took the wrong turn mm-hmm. and then the email came for yes. this session. Yes. So it's not a wrong turn. Mm-hmm. It's not a defect. It's something, it's just something to, that won't be skipped or missed. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be noticed. Why is it that she needed to know about this fascia? Because it was the... It was the absolute thing that drove her to find answers because when she was young, she felt like a, like a medical freak. Mm-hmm. And her mom thought she was going to die and she knew that. And so she felt, she felt responsible for her mother's guilt like she wished she wasn't defective so her mother didn't have to worry Mm -hmm. so she hid it from everybody and she never told anybody and she became a nurse and listened to everybody else's fears and she never ever told them same thing she never told anybody what has this holding on to all of this guilt been doing to her Well, it it was a good thing because either either you let it out and you you let it do what it's supposed to do, or you let it break you. Mm-hmm. What has it done for her? It's, it's like the alchemy. Mm-hmm. When she was little, when she was little, she had to wear an eye patch Mm -hmm. because of one of the fascia related things and all the kids asked her why she had an eye patch her mom told her to say that she was a pirate and there was gold behind there Mm -hmm. so she realized she could do that. Mm-hmm. She has become a pirate. She pirated her profession that she chose and made it into something else. And all of that will be, all of those experiences will be turned into gold, to money. Mm-hmm. And so basically, that's part of it. She didn't know that all the times she said she was a pirate and it was gold, that it was like a metaphor. Mm-hmm. For her own life? Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's it drove her to it drove her to just to, the need to determine if we are a victim of our diagnoses and diseases or if we have complete control of them and we do Mm -hmm. and so she she went on this mission to discover what she could do about it about this thing she supposedly couldn't do anything about and it was the, like the root, the driving force behind everything where she is now. So how can she take this even farther? Because she's very interested in using, for example, hypnotherapy to assist those who are, who are dying. It just has to be that, um, 
she just has to let go of not knowing how to transition and just let it transition. Mm -hmm. uh, she already had a patient recently that was the like um sort of an aspect of the transition. It was very clear to her. And just before that, she had decided that she would surrender to the job that she doesn't necessarily like and that she would appreciate all of the good parts of it. And it was just something wonderful. And the family member told her that they were sure that she had been groomed her whole life just for them. Mm -hmm. So it's already happening. Good. Can you tell me a little bit about what happened when that hospice patient was transitioning and he said he was in a bad storm? Could you take her into that special place since she can see? I think it was his resistance. Mm -hmm was fighting it. He was, he was in some sort of a fight, perhaps, mm -hmm. where his soul was going to go. Mm -hmm. I think fear, people are afraid. So he was in a storm, mm -hmm. a spiritual storm. So as a hospice nurse or someone who just is there with someone, before they transition out of their body, before they die, what is the best thing that you could do to help someone in that transition? Speak to them as you normally would. Mm -hmm. They can... They, they're in so many places. It's like having a, a foot in each, in different dimensions. Mm -hmm. But their ability to communicate that is often um, subdued by pain medications and things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they even think that they're talking back, but they're not. Mm -hmm. Just so talk just, to them as you normally would. Okay, because they can hear you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Is there any other advice that you would like to give Connie about this special work that she's doing? Don't, don't try to make it happen. All of the other things that have come to her, she never had any idea that those things could happen. She never tried to make them happen. They just happened. Mm -hmm. I think it's so hard for her to let go of guilt for not doing more, doing more, doing more, getting it done. Mm -hmm. So she needs to let go more? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Allow. Allow. How can she allow herself to just be? She's so self-conscious. She's so intense. She wants to be able to let go and just stroll a little bit more like the diva that she is. It seems to be, it's all about letting go, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is about letting go. I think it's letting, I think it's accepting all of the judgments and preconceived ideas that she feels coming from people's energies when they observe her. Mm -hmm. And all of that stiffens her up. And then eventually that transfers over to the fascia. The fascia becomes stiff. Mm -hmm. There has to be a certain sense of 
squatter off a duck's back. Mm -hmm. Can we begin doing that today? Yes. All right. So I'd like to have her visualize something that she can use in the future to let go, to allow the energy to flow through her so that she can release any of those judgments, release any of those ideas, preconceived notions about herself, about others. So it will be like water on a duck. We can use a light, we can use a color, we can use a texture that she can use to just flow over and through her. What can we use today? It's always blue orbs. She right. always sees these blue, like, it's always, she always used to think maybe it was because she had blue on and then even mm -hmm. if she didn't wear blue, it was there. All right. So let's bring this blue and you can either make these orbs larger or smaller. What size would you, could you like, use? Like lots of them, like raining blue orbs. All right. So let's go ahead and begin to visualize a situation in which she needs to let go. Let go of the self-consciousness. Let go of judgment of herself, of others. And let's begin to see her standing in her own power, confident, allowing these orbs to begin to just reign over her and coming in through her, connecting with the fascia, almost like a beautiful film of protection, of lubrication, allowing that judgment to just flow right out. You're replacing it with this blue, full of love, full of acceptance, full of knowing, flexibility compassion knowing that we are all one and we are all here with different experiences and missions and expressions of who we are that by acknowledging that we are all one with different expressions we can accept exactly who we are and who others are and accept their mission in their own way Allow that to just absorb and take hold, giving her calm, giving her peace, giving her understanding. And as the breath releases any resistance, allow those blue orbs to just settle in and be there for her whenever she needs them. So tell me now, give me a report of how the fascia looks now. You said lubrication mm -hmm. and flexibility. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what those blue orbs do. Beautiful, beautiful. And now that we understand that, I'd like to ask a few questions about her past as a child, because she did go through quite a bit. Why is it that she had this imaginary friend? Who was this imaginary friend, Conky? Is Conky someone <coughs> who has come here to help her? No. Tell me who Conky was. It's like a twin soul or... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
what would yeah. she maybe maybe a <coughs> maybe <clears throat> Maybe a split of her own soul. Mm -hmm. All right. Would you allow me to connect with Conky now? <coughs> yes. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to count from five to one. With each number, we'll be going back in time and space. And when I get to number one, we're going to connect with the Conky to find out who Conky is and the reason for being in the lifetime of Connie. Taking a deep breath in now. Five. <clears throat> going through back, through time and space, getting younger and younger. Four. <coughs> Connecting with the images. Three. Seeing yourself through the eyes of this child. Being able to read. <clears throat> Two. Reading the energy of Conky and one. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Is this Conky? Yes. Conky, can you tell me who you are? Like part of the same... Part of the same egg. <clears throat> <coughs> a split. Mm -hmm. Like a twin. And why is it that you showed yourself to Connie when she was little? We, stay, we still stay connected. You still stay together. Mm hmm Like a, um... Like a different aspect of her that's living a different reality now. Mm hmm What she does affects me and what I do affects her. But I went away <clears throat> in her mind and she learned that I was thought of by mainstream society is imaginary. Mm -hmm. So how are you affecting her right now? Are you still connected to her? <clears throat> We're still connected. Mm -hmm. How do you affect her and she can affect you? Just by the way we feel. Mm -hmm. Just by the way how we love, <clears throat> how much resistance we have. Mm -hmm. The memories that she had were just being connected to me. And I also had access to her mm -hmm. better childhood. So what kind of lifetime do you live, Conky? Very different. Mm -hmm. Can you show Connie now what your life is like? Give her your eyes, your vision. What do you look like? <clears throat> Where do you live? Very isolated, mm -hmm. but I want it that way. Who is in your life, Conky? like scientist, geeky type people, mm -hmm. like um, like um, observers, data gatherers. Does she tap into your life when she sleeps? Yes. Is this the formulas that she sees? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about those formulas? What are they? What do you do? It's, in um, it's almost like predicting trends based on momentum. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, like any type of trend, it could be personalized or broad generalized, specific.
Conky, she had an experience that if you were with her, you probably will remember. It was when she said something that made all of those of child services, child protective services people laugh. What happened at that time when she was a child? What made them laugh so much? It was just that she answered with such sort of childlike openness. Mm -hmm. It was just something to do with maybe the holes in her stockings Mm -hmm. when they asked her questions about if she had clothes. Mm -hmm. It's just something simple. Something innocent? It was innocence, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. So they were taken aback from the innocence of it? Yes, because she was so forthright. Mm -hmm. Good. But it made her deeply Mm self-conscious. So now that she understands that she was just being honest, and they were probably surprised by the honesty. Can she see now? Yeah, everybody is still the same today. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same. So nothing has changed? No. Mm -hmm. She just learned to hide the openness a little bit. Okay. Does she need to uh, to hide that? Sometimes she does, until sometimes, sometimes her path of least resistance is, Mm -hmm. but certainly not as much as she does. Okay. Do you have any advice for her? Just chill out. Chill out. Very good. Is there anything else that you would like to tell Connie today? have to embrace the part of you that you're scared to be. You have to embrace the fear of being great. Embrace you have to be, you have to keep going up <clears throat> even when everybody else thinks you've went up enough. Mm-hmm. You have to give very little attention to jealousy. Don't try to make people feel better. Make people feel like you're just one of them because you're really not. Mm -hmm. You are, but you're not. Mm -hmm. Was she ever involved in a human exchange program? She observed it. Mm Mm-hmm. So the part of the program that she is involved with is in her, the aspect of her putting this body together? The DNA. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. That w- it was like, um, almost like a hobby, mm-hmm. like a passion, an interest. How did she implant herself into this family? That body? came from it it came from she was some type she was somebody had done made her like that Mm -hmm. and she thought if they could do it for their own selfish reasons she should be able to she was as smart as they are Mm -hmm. And she figured that she could um, learn it, Mm -hmm. but not let them know that she learned it. And that she could, um, like, infiltrate it 
and do it herself the way she wanted it done and take control of her own planning. Mm -hmm. Is this aspect of her that planned this still on a ship? It's, that's, it's, that's where Conky comes in. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did she implant this DNA into a cell into her mother, for example? Yeah, it's... Was it genetics? Yeah, but when she was little, they used to look in her dad's telescope on his rifle at the UFOs up over the house. Mm -hmm. And she had a bloody nose every night, every night. And it was uh, they did stuff at night. Mm hmm. What did they do at night? Like working on her DNA. Mm hmm. But it, it was like her team that it was her team, you know, somewhere in between the, the life. It was her team. Mm hmm. Where are the, her team from? Do they have a, a, a place, a galaxy, or a planet? There's a connection to Mars. There always has been, but it's it's mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. Maybe like a lot of traveling, but there was there was some roots on Mars. Mm -hmm. In this lifetime, has she ever been to Mars in any way? Yeah, she had a childhood friend. And um, they didn't go to public school together, but one time, one year, they rode the public school bus. And her friend would chant, I'm from Mars, I'm from Mars, I'm from Mars. And she knows that she still meets that little girl. <clears throat> on Mars at night sometimes mm -hmm. because she hears, I'm from Mars, I'm from Mars, I'm from Mars. So is she visiting it with her astral body? Yes, mm -hmm. with her friend. With her friend, okay. And I'd like to ask a question as to why it is that you brought Connie to the session today. Why now? Why here? It's just a natural progression. She's Part of it is just proving to herself that whatever she decides to do, she always does it. Mm -hmm. And you don't really have to hammer at it and enforce it. <clears throat> you can know you want to do something and then just sort of set it down and it'll come to you when it's ready to be picked up. And that's what she did with this. And it was more sort of like a, an example with some of the other things that she hammers at and tries to make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, the easiest way. It's just to let it happen. Very good. Completely alert, feeling wonderful all over. <laughs> How do you feel? Good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. How long do you think this was? 20 or 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. A little bit longer. We're on an hour and 39 minutes. Really? Where'd you go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How does your body feel? Good. Feels good? Mm -hmm. I feel like I could just kind of lay here and go to sleep yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, you feel really relaxed. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything about it? Yeah. Pretty interesting stuff. Yeah. I didn't seem like it was that long, though. Mm. Mm. So now we know about the fascia. Yeah. It's like your seventh sense. Yeah, I just felt really free, like everything just was really free to yeah. clear. Yeah. And I, I've heard Cryon talk about your innate. And it's almost like yeah, the fashion. Yeah, you innate. know, I just discovered him not so mm -hmm. long ago. Yeah, it almost seemed like while you were talking about I, it. I haven't heard him say that. Yeah, yeah. He talks about the innate, and when you speak with your innate, um, 
it heals. And it's almost like the fascia might be the innate. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a... Um, it's like an, it's a very alive, energized... It's, yeah. it's an organ, just like... On its own. Yeah. Interesting. Like a very smart, intelligent organ. Yeah. Within yeah. your body. Mm-hmm. Because the other bodies we have are outside the body and this one's yeah i think like all the um like what we would typically refer to as um what's the word i want powers that are like um i can't think of the word like your intuitive yeah powers yeah so is this something that you want to share with others you want to keep it private we only had some personal stuff at the end, but it's up to you. I think it probably could. Maybe I want to see it, but probably could. I think the part about the innate is amazing. Yeah, the, uh, fascia. the fascia is amazing. Yeah, that's fine. So, probably. Connie, this was good. It was. It was a good session. It was. So tell everybody why you came. What was the reason you came to this session? The reason was just really to experience it. It was just... Yeah. natural progression I mean it wasn't some one big thing yeah it was like I found it oh I'm gonna do this and I did it <laughs> That's really cool. and uh, we had during the session there was something that your higher self said it was about well you kind of like just veered off the road and we were talking about how your phone kind of binged with my email and you kind of made it over oh, here yeah. mm -hmm. so basically whenever things whatever is going to happen to you is just going to happen yeah. to you when it's supposed to be you right. can't over plan something right right and, right and all the experiences all the quote-unquote wrong turns mm -hmm. are really the are right not. are not the right. they are part of the they're part of your plan yeah so we talked a lot about the fascia mm -hmm. and I'd like for you to explain to everybody what the fascia is and why it, it's it's unique to you. Why why what happened to you mm -hmm. to call attention to this fascia? Fascia is a web of connective tissue. It does just that. It connects everything. It connects mm -hmm. your feelings, your organs, your muscles, um, everything you have. It, it's interlocks. It's a web. Everything is connected. So. What does it look like? What is so this? if you were to when you cut open a steak, the white stringy stuff, that is your fascia. Mm -hmm. And humans have that as well. It's all throughout our body. Uh, like I was telling you, when people complain of muscular pain, or I don't know when I said that. Did I say that in the session? Yes, yeah. when you were it's, stiff. It's yeah, it's your stiffness. Mm. And so when we are stiff and rigid in our feelings and thoughts, all of that comes through to our body. And it affects it. It's our fascia. What people blame on every other organ of the body, even like your bladder. Probably the problem is not your bladder. Probably your bladder is being squeezed and constricted by tight fascia. Wow. And so you hold, uh, like if you hold em emotions in your pelvis, uh -huh. you know, it can be, it can be sexual, it can be so many different things. That's just where your your fascia is holding it. The it's issue amazing. isn't necessarily with it's your amazing. bladder, but you cause inflammation to it because it's constricted, and now the problem is in your bladder. Maybe maybe bladder cancer, yeah. cystitis, whatever. Yeah. But the root problem is not your bladder. It starts with your thoughts and your I'm emotions. Still, still like shaking, you're buzzing, buzzing. <laughs> you buzz all the time. <laughs> yeah, but it's amazing. It is. It's really I'm amazing. Like, I'm just like so energized. Like like seven up or something. You're just fizzing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what happens after a session. Right here. Yeah. So we learned a lot today in this session. We learned a lot. And what's fascinating was uh, the part of you that was on the spaceship kind of putting this body together. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm such a planner. I love to plan yeah and so you were planning this body this look everything everything you, you so when people say that why did I get this body why did I get this hair it, it, it's almost fascinating to have seen how uh, you were just saying okay well I'm gonna pick this hair color and I'm gonna pick this so you know that everything that you have in your body has been handpicked because right. I needed the experience or attribute that is affiliated with it basically isn't it amazing so stop complaining about what you look like right. you picked it for the experience yeah. that goes with it yeah doesn't mean you can't change it that's right absolutely does that's not right. mean 
because I think sometimes the the purpose is for the experience of changing it. Exactly, and and I could I could but you have to that. accept it. I think to change it. Yeah, I, and and that's happened in, in my whole life. Um, I have noticed that you know I was born with certain things that I didn't like about myself. For example, my teeth. Mm -hmm. um, I was born with 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 <laughs> a big overbite, okay. a big gap, and. Uh, it kind of fit the personality that I was at that age yeah. and then once I got my braces on and I took my braces off it was almost like I had transformed yes and then I needed glasses and when I wore glasses I was a certain personality the moment I got right. my contacts and adjusted that all of a sudden it created yeah. a different person so it it's almost in the magic of recreating yourself you create yourself your whole life yes it's not just yeah one bam and you're done and you're here right it, that's just that's exactly just part of it. You just create yourself. Before. Exactly. So if you've been, you know, overweight and 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 putting this type of, it's almost like a personality that is yep. associated with this, you know, uh, overweightness. And if you decide, uh, well, today I'm going to start working out, and you transform yourself, you, you transform your personality too. And and it's it's little by little by little yeah it's it's not one major yeah. I mean it could be it but could be like braces took two years yes, right? <laughs> you know it's almost like a birthing of the new you even if I think even if there's a big thing uh, some big transformation there it really wasn't because there yeah. was so much leading up to that exactly so now we know the fascia was really important so would you tell everybody Connie where are you from I live in Phoenix Arizona from I still kind of claim from North Carolina. We're in Charlotte, North Charlotte. Carolina right now. So uh, it's been great that Connie has been able to come here and visit family while she's here. So uh, it's been nice. And uh, if you would like a session with me, just go to my website, albawyman.com. Uh, go to the hypnosis tab. Click on newsletter. You have to sign up for the newsletter to get an appointment with me. It comes out about once a month. And once it comes out, there's going to be links on that email with calendars and those calendars will tell you where I'm traveling to. I travel all around the world doing these sessions, doing gatherings. If you want to come and meet me at an event, go to my event page. They're all over the place. I would love to meet you. So I hope you enjoyed this session. I certainly did and I hope I get to meet you sometime soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>